All right, today we're looking at the surface area quiz for prisms and cylinders. And you can see we have different parts to this quiz. So part one gives you the first shape is a cylinder. And 10 is the diameter because the line stretches all the way across the circular base. So to find the radius, you just divide the diameter by 2. So the radius is 5. The diameter is 10. To include the units, the height of the solid is never on the base, so it's 20. The lateral surface area formula is here. Use your formula chart. So you're going to key in 2 times pi times the radius times the height. And you get... So round to the tenths place, since there's a 1 next to the 3, you're going to keep the 3. So 628.3. And the total surface area is the lateral plus, so all you have to do in your calculator is press plus, because the calculator is going to remember your last answer. And now enter 2 times pi times the radius squared. Your squared key is right here. It's the x squared key. And so your total surface area. So now, since we're rounding to the tenths, since the number to the right of the 3 is 5 or greater, we need to round up the 3 to a 4. So 785.4. Don't forget the units. It's meters squared since we're dealing in area. All right, so that takes care of the cylinder. Let's move on to the rectangular prism. This is a measurement of 8. It's hard to see, so I'll, I'll rewrite it. All right, so draw the base. Your base is shaded. It's a rectangle. It's already been drawn for you here, but on your quiz, I don't think it was drawn for you. So write in the dimensions. The dimensions of this rectangle are 4 and 8. You're using these two numbers. The shape of the base, rectangle, not a square. A square has congruent sides. These sides are not all congruent. Big B stands for area of the base. Look at your formula chart. How do you find area of a rectangle? What's well, on your formula chart? Base times height. So 8 times 4. And since it's area, it's going to be squared units, so centimeters squared. What does P stand for? Perimeter of the base. How do you find perimeter of a rectangle? You add the four sides, not just these two sides. There's another side that has a length of 8 and 4. So you could do 8 plus 4 to get 12. And then since you have two more sides that are 8 and 4, just multiply 12 times 2. And you get 24. Or just add in your calculator the four sides. And you get the same answer of... 24. And perimeter is not a squared measurement. It's only uh, just use the units of centimeters. The height is never the measurement that's on the base. So the height is 10. And so now you can see there's a different formula between cylinders and prisms. So P times H, we've already found P. It's 24 times the height. We've already found the height. So you don't need a calculator for this. Just add a 0 on the end of 24. So it's 240 centimeters in its area, so we have to square it. So total surface area is the 240 that we just figured plus 2 times the area of the base. Well, why 2 times the area of one base? Because you have a base on this side and you have a base on the opposite side. So you have two bases. So you have to multiply the area of one base times 2. So the lateral surface area plus 2 times the area of, uh, so 2, what is it, 2 times 32 plus 2 times 32. So when I write it this way, there's an implied multiplication symbol between the 2 and the 32. So 2 times 32 is 64. 64 plus 240 is 304 centimeters squared. All right, so 
Uh, next, we have another prism. This is just a triangular prism. So, um, okay. So, I wasn't really paying attention. So, I guess you need to draw the base in the rectangle. So, the shape of the base is a triangle. So, you're going to draw a triangle. Just sketch out that triangle. So, it's going to look something like it's a right triangle. So, what you can do. You don't need to draw it exactly in the same orientation. You can draw it just in any orientation. It's easier to draw a right triangle like this. And so, see how the legs are 6 and 8? So, 6, 8, and the hypotenuse is 10. Since this edge is 10, the opposite edge has to be 10 as well. So that measurement is 10. So the shape of the base is obviously a triangle. The area of the base, you have to look at your formula chart for area of a triangle. It's one half little b times h. So little b is the base of the triangle, which is 6. The height of the triangle is 8. Always use the leg measurements on a right triangle for your base and height. So half of 6 times 8. So half of 6 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. We don't know what the units are because it's not listed for us, so just use the generic term units squared. Perimeter of the base, you have to add the three sides of the triangle. So 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 10 is 24. 24 units. The height is never on the base, so 12 has to be the height. The height of the prism can never be one of these numbers. It can never be 6, 8, or 10. It's always the number that's off the base. So 12 units. And the lateral surface area formula does not change between a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. It's still perimeter of the base times the height. So perimeter of the base was 24. The height, we said, is 12. Let me teach you a mental math trick. So 24 times 10, we said was 240, but we have two more uh, groups of 24. So we have to do 240, and so 2 times 24 is 48. So 240 plus 48 is 288. It's a real easy mental math trick to use. Units squared. And so the total surface area is going to be the P times H, which we just calculated plus the area of the two bases, which we said the area of one base is 24, so the area of two bases would be 48. 2 times 24 is 48. And when you add 288 to 48, you get 336 units squared. All right, let's move on to part two. Actually, no, we have part one on the back. So let's continue with part one. So we have another cylinder. Um, it's hard to see, but this measurement here is 5. See how the measurement starts at the center of the circle and then goes to the edge? So that is a radius measurement. It doesn't, the line doesn't go all the way across. So 5 centimeters is the radius. The diameter is going to be twice that number. So 5 times 2 is 10. The height of the solid is never on the base, so it's going to be 28. Let's use the formula. 2 times pi times the radius times the height. All right, so we have a 4 next to the tenths place, so we're going to keep that as 6, so 879.6 and centimeter squared. Total surface area is the lateral number that we just calculated, so 879.6 plus the area of two bases, so plus 2 times pi times the radius squared. So 1036.7 is the answer. So 
36.7 is going to be your lat your total surface area. All right, so forget about that. Uh, next, so your base is shaded. It's a it's a rectangle. So since this edge is eight, that edge has to be eight meters. Since that edge is seven, this edge has to be seven meters. So just draw a rectangle, write in those measurements. The shape of the base is a rectangle. The area is base times height, just like on the other side. So eight times seven. So eight times eight is 64. Eight times seven has to be 56. The perimeter of the base, just add the four sides. You can do 8 plus 7, then multiply by 2. So 8 plus 7 is 15, times 2 is 30. And these are all meters. The height is never on the base, so 2 has to be the height. 2 meters. So perimeter of the base, 30, times the height of the prism, 2 gives you a lateral surface area of 60 meters squared. And then your total surface area, we have to add in the area of the two bases, where the area of one base was 56. So the area of two bases has to be 112. So we're going to do 60 plus the area of the two bases equals 172 meters squared. All right, let's move on. So the next shape is a triangular prism. The shape is, of the base is already shaded for you. It's a triangle. Write in the measurements, 8 and 5 and 3. So the height of the triangle is 3. Shape of the base is a triangle. Big B stands for area of the triangle. Here's the formula. This is the equivalent to 1 half little b times h. So the base of the triangle is 8. The height of the triangle is 3. Take half of that, you get 12. The perimeter, you don't include 3 in the perimeter. You're only looking, you're only adding the outside edges. So 8, 5, and 5 is 18. The height is not 3. Almost made a mistake there. The height is never on the base. So the height is 6. So notice that there's a difference between the height of the triangular base, which is 3, and there the height of the prism, which is 6. So P times H to get lateral surface area. Um, the trick here is what I do is I know um, 6 times 8 uh, is 48. 6 times 10 is 60. 48 plus 60 is 108. So work in groups of 10, and that makes your mental math a lot easier. So the lateral surface area is 108 centimeters squared. Just in case you don't believe me, so 18 times 6, 108. So again, 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 10 is 60. 48 plus 60 is 108. Practice your mental math. Don't always use the calculator. So the total surface area is going to be 108 plus 2 times the area of the base. The area of the base is 12, so 2 times 12. So 132 is your total surface area. All right, so that concludes part one. Let's move on to part two. Part two is a little bit more wordy. Samantha is going to plaster the walls of her room. Her room is 15 feet long. 16 feet wide and 10 feet tall. What is the lateral area of the room that Samantha is going to plaster? So the floor of the room is the base. 
the lateral surface area formula is P times H. H is 10. So H equals 10. P is the perimeter of the floor. So the shape of the floor is a rectangle. The dimensions of the floor are 15 and 16. So you could add the four sides, or you could do 15 plus 16 is 31. 31 times 2 is 62. So the perimeter equals 62. I'll check my math just to make sure I'm right. So 15 plus 15 plus 16 plus 16, 62. So to find the lateral surface area of this room, you do the perimeter of the base times the height. The height is 10. Tells you that right here. Use my trick. Don't, you don't need a calculator. Just add a zero onto the end of 62. And what are we working with? Feet squared. All right, so that's your answer right there. 620 feet squared is the, the area of the walls of her room, which is lateral area of that the rectangular prism, which is the shape of her room. A cylinder candle has a diameter of 2 inches. So if the diameter is 2 inches, the radius has to be the diameter divided by it has to be half the diameter, so the radius is 1. The height is 6. What is the total surface area? So we're going to use 2 times pi times the radius times the height plus 2 times pi times the radius squared just key that into your calculator. Let's see what you get. I mean, anything times one is going to be one, or um, one. So any anything times one is going to be the original number. So you don't really have to include the one, but I'll do it just for effect. Plus two times pi times one squared, which is going to be one. So I'll just do it. Oops. 1 squared. So we have to round to the tenths. So that's going to round the 9 up. So that's going to round the 3 up as well. So the answer is going to be 44. And inches squared. Since the 8 rounded up the 9, the 9 is going to round up the 3 to a 4. So 44. All right, the last part, you're creating a new label of a Campbell's chicken noodle soup can. That would be a lateral cylinder. So the formula is going to be 2 pi r h for lateral surface area of a cylinder. Your brother's painting his bedroom walls, not including the ceiling or floor. We just had an example of that with Samantha's bedroom. So that's lateral, and it's a prism. The formula for lateral of the prism is perimeter of the base times the height. You're wrapping a Toblerone candy box for your dad's birthday party. So you need to wrap the entire Toblerone. So that's going to be total. It's a prism. It tells you that right there. So look at the formula on your formula chart for a prism. It's lateral plus the area of the two bases. <clears throat> You're measuring how much aluminum is needed to create a can of tuna. The aluminum has to enclose the tuna, so that's going to be total. It's a cylinder, so the formula is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Look at your formula chart. You're measuring how much cardboard is needed to create a box of Cheerios. Boxes of cereal are typically in the shape of prisms. It's total. You need to enclose the entire a box. So a prism, total prism is going to be that. And I think that's it. Yep, because the other side of the quiz is blank. All right, thanks for watching the video.